Welcome back to the SSL premiere here at the Nexon Arena, sponsored by Janair. My name is Valdez, with me is Wolf. We're here for the second best of three of the night. It will be Maru, fantastic Terran player, up against Stats, the most recent champion here in Korea. Maru's aggression and control in this matchup, always what he's known for. Uh, and I really feel like when you take a look at how this matchup is on paper, it looks fantastic. You mentioned earlier, you know, stats coming off of the GSL finals just yesterday. Can he really be in peak condition? I mean, I could tell you uh, from personal experience, you know, there was, uh, as is common in Korea after a tournament, um, you know, a, a small after party, he was there greeting the fans, taking mm -hmm. photos. The, uh, the fans are, of course, allowed to go to that party. Uh, Freaka made it open. Um, so we were all there. Uh, all, basically, everybody in StarCraft is there. Sats is there. So he's out late last night. He won a finals. He's, he's got a trophy, right? But now he's playing a totally different matchup <laughs> where Maru has been able to study his matches yeah. against Ryung um, from the GSL semifinals. And, uh, you know, there's definitely the opportunity because Stats is just an incredible PVT player right now and was even able to beat Ryung who then beat Maru, who had beaten Maru before. Um, you know, he should theoretically still be able to win this one, but there's a lot against him, right? Maru has a lot of extra cards, extra tools here to work with. So in that way, it's kind of towards his edge. Like if I, if we were doing yeah. pro league predictions, I would definitely bet on Maru tonight. hundred percent. I mean, he's got the rest, he's got the preparation, he's got the mindset. For stats, it's like he's probably still in shock and awe of like the whole process of being up on stage, winning a, a huge championship like that, kissing the trophy, everything, being the big superstar. Now he's like back to work the next day. Whereas Mari, he's you know he's just been doing the the grind here. So would expect Mari to win, but again, stats. There is a reason why he is the champion, right? Is because he is currently the best player in Korea. So. Uh, if he can just, you know, play kind of a standard game without preparation and uh, still keep up with Maru, that would be fantastic. Yeah, I mean, that that's the that's the cool thing about this series. If he beats Maru off of preparing for a grand finals, I mean, it just speaks more volumes about his skill. I mean, we, we yeah. saw him crown a champion yesterday. To win this series would be incredible. And... You know, there's two aspects to professional StarCraft play in Korea. It's just your ability, your talent, and there's also preparation. And that's why Jin Air is still remaining as a team and having a team house is very powerful, very useful for players like Maru, who were, you know, kings of Pro League. They won the last season. Maru's Pro League record much more impressive than his individual league record. And, uh, you know, it's tough to just rely on skill alone in a best of three like this. Yeah, so Maru, he did take the 2-1 victory the last time he was here. Stats did drop to Solar, actually 1-2, which was kind of surprising for me because, you know, he was preparing for that matchup the week before the GSL Finals. So, kind of interesting to see the uh, the statistics so far, the standings in this league. But guys, we are going to be jumping into set number one right now. Maru versus Stats on the big stage. Top right, the blue Terran. It is, of course, Maru from the Janair Greenways. And his opponent, the defending GSL champion as of late last evening, it is Sats representing Splice here. So let's talk about, you know, what it means. As it, you know, we had a, a fan in the crowd actually right after the Sats cheer yell, you won the GSL, now it's time to win the SSL. Uh, really, only Classic has been able to be a Star League champion and a GSL champion. The only player to do so so far. Morrow is an OSL champion, which as that tournament as it, in its current state does not exist. Um, is He may be the only one who ever ends up winning all three, the OSL, the SSL, and the GSL. But uh, Maru won the first SSL, 
And nobody really talks about the fact that he was so dominant in Pro League, considered by many to be the top Terra in, in the world for a very long time. It just doesn't... He's a, had, he was trying to get that elusive GSL title. It's so rare to win multiple tournaments despite having top finishes. Uh, Stats has, of course, been a pro gamer for longer than Maru. Uh, when Stats played his first Pro League Mar uh, matches, Maru was in diapers, and he just... Uh, won his first individual league tournament last night. So there's a lot of history in stats and what he's accomplished as a pro gamer. But he had his first big win. And it's funny that, uh, you know, he was never really recognized, I feel, properly for the achievements he's, he's made until last night. And uh, again, achievements and recent wins can't always win out against preparation. Just raw skill versus what Morrow has brought to the table tonight. I feel it does make him the favorite in terms of just a best of three. Yeah, we we'll definitely have to agree. Uh, maybe this, if I, I feel like if it was, oh my an god, event, this wow. happened. On okay. TV. Wow. Uh. <laughs> I mean, this is just sloppy. You have to send your SCBs down faster than that. That actually absolutely should never happen. Yeah. So we were talking about preparation. Well, <laughs> stats. Maybe he's in better form right now. That's something we should talk about as well. You know, he, he was playing tons of StarCraft in preparation. Yes, it was a, a different matchup, but at the same time, maybe he was practicing a bit harder, whereas Maru uh, may have not been, you know, just making assumptions here. Sure, I mean, it's tough for us to know, obviously, but uh, that's just kind of a, a weird mistake. I mean, there's nothing else to say about it. Um, you know, that won't happen to a master level player on the ladder. Uh, it just uncharacteristic mistake here by Maru. Um, you know, I last time we got to commentate, uh, Maru was in the... Oh man, it's still going at it. <laughs> Almost got a second kill. Uh, the last time we got to commentate Maru together, uh, us, was of course back in the Kespa Cup. Um, this Reaper is looking for trouble. Does go down. Uh, and he had one of his worst performances ever at the Kespa Cup, falling super early in that tournament. But he looked really strong in the GSL. Uh, nearly getting that semi, is losing to Ryung in a TBT, which has always historically been Ryung's best matchup. And for him to win here, I feel like would be, uh, it would feel great. I feel like, okay, yes, I, I didn't make it to that GSL Finals I've been coveting for so long, but I've defeated the most recent champion. Ooh. That's a nice placement on the yeah, way to that's pretty cool. Look at this third base coming down decently early. He's, he's, I mean, it's a big map, Daybreak. There's no scouting on that side of the map. He took out the Reaper, too, which is very important. He's going to deny a lot of scouting here from Maru. And Maru's going to be dealing with this Oracle. I mean, Maru knows this is coming. He got the scout off with that Reaper earlier, but he still has to focus on this in the base. Yeah, and the Widowmine's on cooldown, too. I mean, yeah. it can be helpful. He has to use this Viking. And two kills, but uh, the Viking will force this away. Ooh, Marines actually might secure the kill. They will. Nicely done. <laughs> Okay, this game is pretty weird to start off this uh, best of three between these two players. Um, don't forget, remember, Stats is preparing for a completely different matchup. Uh, that's not going to just, of course, devoid him of Oracle control and things like that, but uh, I like the choice of build for him so far. It's Daybreak. Even though the third base is far away, you put any sort of pressure on the Terran player, like this Phoenix uh, follow up harass that we're going to see, it makes it very difficult for the Terran to attack that far away third base. And the Terran is always really going to struggle to have a third base against any sort of aggression on this map. If Maru knew about the fast third base, he might be able to punish it with some aggression of his own because there's not a lot of standing army for stats. He has three Phoenixes and I think one Adept. I think that's his entire army right now. Uh, but because he simply just doesn't know, he's kind of hunkered up in his base here, getting Stam, combat shields, no third CC, just powering up an army, a ground-based army. It's a pretty quick double tech lab here, so he can have a large Marauder Force, he can have these double upgrades quickly. Uh, but obviously his economy is going to suffer as a result. He's just kind of sitting back on the defensive here. Because the Phoenixes yeah. haven't really shown. You know, he's probably just going to be waiting for that Stim Combat Shields plus one uh, timing to, to go across the map, start putting on some pressure. But the Phoenixes, if they are in position, they definitely can shut down a bit of that. But as we were talking about, this third base being this far ahead is going to be fantastic for stats here. Phoenix is just flying on in, seeing what they can see. What With what Maro is doing here, like, you can see he's, in terms of army value, right? Like, he has a large army. He didn't make a third CC. He's producing a lot of Marines. He's going to have these big upgrades. He's going to have this timing. So stats needs to 
ward this off. He's adding five gateways right now because finally he's hit the return on this third nexus. He has the money to support all these additional gateways. He's got glaives. He's going to have a ton of adepts to defend. This is a tight win Dumaro has to hit. And Stats is trying to use these Phoenixes to slow this down, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's working. Maru is going to move across the map right now with this large ground army. Phoenix is not going to be too great against this almost pure marine bio ball that's going to be heavily upgraded here. Yeah, the only thing they're they're going to be good at is picking up the Widow Mines if he can get the uh, detection in place to deal with that. Maru, historically, just always fantastic at taking out uh, observers in the sky. And we'll see how and if he can actually hold this off. He's going to be forcing this fight, actually forced to pick up the Marines in the front. All the Widowmines in the back here, not really getting those hits. Yeah, he doesn't need them yet, though, but this army has thinned out quite a bit because Stats actually avoided those Widowmines so well. He actually made to simply complete the Shade, decides not to. The Shades could have uh, drawn the Widowmines back into those Marines. This is a tiny army now. I think Stats has pretty successfully shut this down. This drop's going to get shut down by Phoenix as well. This was a risky choice by Maru to do this oh against Phoenixes. Yeah, and he gets totally punished for it. Now what has he got? Like, a couple of good Widowmine hits, but he's forced to back off. And this third base has been mining for ages. This army will definitely get cleaned up. I don't think Maru can even stay here. No, he, the thing is, the only reason why he's still here is because if he, if he knows if he picks up, the Phoenixes are going to kill everything anyways. He's just trying to make this valuable in some way. He gets the Observer. <laughs> that he does. <laughs> and, I mean, that's all he's going to get. Uh, he splits some out of X, which is actually nice. He's going to send a third drop in. And look at the supply now. Maru has no third base. This is just dropped on the ground fresh by the SCV. No way to transition now. He's going to have to rely on his harass and his multitasking as his push was shut down. There's several adepts here already. Oh, Four man. more being warped in. This shouldn't be a problem. Immediate warp in there from Stats. It looks like he did take some damage, but will be cleaned up. That one Widowmine at the third base is actually quite annoying. He should clean that up. I hope he uh, did recognize that it's there. It looks like he hasn't. <laughs> okay, it looks like he's just, he oh, doesn't wait, have yeah. detection here because yeah, yeah. that Observer Sniper earlier. So he's just setting them off one by one. Uh, or, you know, sending probes one by one to set them off. This <laughs> situation for Mar now just feels hopeless. How can he hope to take a third base with a puny army that he's currently working on rebuilding? How can he pressure the third base against Phoenixes now? How can he find drops? When you're behind this Terran, especially if you look at a player like Morrow, historically, drops are his forte. He's good at dropping, he's good at oh, you know, multitasking his opponents, but you can't do that versus Phoenixes. They just counter that type of play. And so he's got this late third base with no hope of harass. And I'd say he's really just going to have to, I guess, turtle, hope for a big fight uh, yeah. win. Well, I, I really like Stats' response, too, where he's like, okay, I totally hold, I held that off with flying colors. Your third base is massively late. I'll just take a fourth and also tech into double Robo Colossi because I can. And the next time you decide to move out on the map, you're going to get totally crushed. There's there's no way he can win, win against this army if there's a straight-up fight. He's going to have to pull out some really, really, really spicy shenanigans here if he wants to come back in this game. Absolutely. And that's said straight from the mouth of the spicy salmon himself. And <laughs> look, I mean, how he, he can't win the air war in terms of Vikings, so he's going to try to win it with the Liberators. These shades are never going to commit. They only serve as a reminder as to why Maru cannot take a third base, why taking this third base is so difficult. Uh, and, and it's just like, just constant, constant uh, feigned pressure here. Maru trying to punish this now, but unsuccessful. Shades do get cancelled. He does finally have that third base landed. At the same time that the fourth base probe transfer hits for Stats. Stats has the better upgrades. He's even getting Thermal Lance. And Maru, again, he's going to have to take some miraculous fight. And I think that's going to come down to these Liberators. Perhaps Stats makes a mistake. Or maybe he loses his Phoenixes to Widowmine. That's what Maru's banking on here. And, uh, you know, as close as they get to Max, the better chance he has. So the fact that he has this third base up and running now is a good... Uh, uh, I guess consolation prize for all that early game yeah. went for him. The only other thing that he might be able to do is is attack right before the Colossi come out. There's only one right now, and there is not Thermal Lance. So if he attacks right now, 
He's, he's got an okay chance. We'll see how he can do. Looks like Stats is just going to give up the fourth base. He's doing so much damage to the economy of Maru at the same time. He knows that it's going to be three base versus three base. He knows he just needs maybe 30, 40 seconds to get out a couple extra Colossi with Therm Thermal Lance, and then he can take the fight. Just like this, you're absolutely right. Force Field's going down here. The Colossi just mowing down this army. Maru's got no economy at home, and this will be the end. He didn't need to defend that base. He didn't need to force the fight. All he needed to do was sacrifice it, win the second fight, because as you said, they're on three base to three base, but Maru lost all SCBs at his natural and his third base, so it's really three base to one base now. He defends the fight, catches reinforcing, or rather retreating units here with the Phoenixes, and it looks like we are going into a 1-0 stats here. That's just such an incredible player right now, and really shows here in his crisis management. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would definitely have to agree with you. Like, this is why he is the GSL champion. He's like, okay, what do I need to do to win right now? And he does it perfectly, you know? So, really nicely done. This is going to be the follow-up to the fight that we had before, and that is going to be game one here, going to stats, GG. GG, there you have it. Pretty one-sided. Moro had a terrifying push to come across the map, but he just did not get the fight he wanted because stats avoided engaging the Widow Mines. Widowmines never got hits that they were looking for. And the rest of the game just kind of tells the rest of the story, right? When you hit a three base Protoss who played pretty greedy, he defends the first wave, his five gateways finish, he gets a second wave of units. The rest of the game just tells itself. You, you know, you tell anyone who's been watching StarCraft for a long time, those few sentences, and they're like, oh, I already know how the Lakeham goes. He's desperate, <laughs> he tries, he can't find any damage because the Phoenixes are out, yeah. and he slowly loses the game. Maru was just hoping for something uh, some micro mistake trying to hit before those Colossi, as you mentioned. But Stats sacked the fourth base. That's all she wrote. So Stats looking to take this one 2 0 if he keeps playing like this. Despite all the prep we talked about for Maru in execution, Stats the better player here. Yeah, it's definitely the way it went in game number one. Game two will be on Newkirk Precinct. So things will definitely be mixed up with a very different map. And so this will be Maru's chance to tie it up. Trying to take a, a game here off of the current GSL champion. We'll see if he could do it right now, heading into set number two on Nuker. Maru, Newkirk Precinct down in the bottom right, the Blue Terran, it is Maru. There he is. He doesn't look too happy about that last loss. His opponent, as mentioned, current GSL defending champion, it is Splice's stats. No support from uh, Solar yesterday at the GSL finals. Uh, you know, coming down to see him there uh, at the finals and then uh, showing up to congratulate him after um, of course you know two splice members together and uh, you could definitely feel the camaraderie between the two you see a gas first coming out here from Maru as Newkirk Newkirk precinct in terms of air distance feels like a fairer more balanced metalopolis uh, if you will as the short rush distance by air can allow you to do fast wood mine drops and things of the nature so if stats, you know, goes for like a blind Phoenix build, this could be a problem. But uh, I think that this is a solid opening by Maru. When we saw this map in Challenger, actually, uh, with TY versus Classic, it was a EC <laughs> carrier fest, and it, it, things got out of hand. Mar Maru's getting a little bit of inspiration from that. He's like, "All right, you want to take game number one? We're go we're going 40 minutes here. Hope you enjoy this game, stats." It'll be cool to see. I feel like this map is is another <laughs> variation of the Fat Scrap Station, right? Like yeah. arena style, yeah. but obviously a lot more fair and a lot more balanced. So I, I, I do enjoy this map. I think it's it's quite good. That's actually a good map comparison, arena, in terms of the air distance. Um, no islands per se. I mean, you could take the base a little in the middle that you have to ooh, ooh. proxy to clear the rocks for those. But I suppose. Uh, this is probably going to be a Stargate. 
the problem with doing this is you really uh, weaken yourself to drops if you don't do a lot of damage because then your Stark gets unpowered, you don't have Phoenixes to control the air anymore. Could be something totally unusual, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a Stargate once he hits that 150. There it is. There it is, and this SCV doesn't fully scout the main, so doesn't see quite uh, the fact that there's one missing pylon. He still is suspicious regardless, and if he hits this probe, he's definitely going to know. Ooh, he knows 100%. You saw that blue blip there, he clicked on it. Now he knows it's there, he just doesn't know where it is. And Stats is going to be kicking himself for actually sending the probe home for some greedy extra mining. Even the Reaper tracks down the probe, so the probe's going to pay for this with its life, likely. The Adept comes out to save it. Maru, what? Okay. Uh, it's a proxied starport of his own. And he I mean, knows he it's knows. out there, right? He knows that so probe didn't just go scout the top of the map for no reason. I wonder if he's just going to defend this with Widowmines and even go like Banshees or something like that to counterattack or just make a Viking to try to chase this down. And look at this. Oh, it's actually going to get killed potentially before it finishes. Oh, man, it definitely will be. That's going to go down. One last hit immediately oh, canceled. That is huge. So painful. So painful to lose that. Now he's up to have a Viking to deal with that uh, Oracle coming across, he has the, the Widow Mine. He has a second one on the way, and he's got several Marines here actually on his ramp, I believe, just to make sure they're kind of in a position to deal with both. No turrets, of course. Yeah, oh this boy. is already tons of damage. Yeah, this is already really nice. He can fight against the Marines. It's not enough. He's going to be able to take out two SCVs, four Marines, and two probably... Mules? Oh! Yep, that's going to be two and an extra SCV. That's four in total, five. Kills this a, is way too much damage. Kills a spawning SCV. The Reaper came back. I'm not sure what he was hoping to accomplish against that, but he's uh, going to go back across the map now. Stats knows this is just a free third, and that Morrow is kicking himself. He's making a Cyclone. He has no Marines. The um, limiting of damage here is due to... Oh, he gets oh, the God. The limiting of damage is, is is just due to the fact the Oracle didn't have enough energy, <laughs> okay? It was not because yeah. Morrow defended. He would have killed every SCV and the game would be over if well, that Oracle had more energy. This, this, my friends, is the GSL champion coming in here, okay? Really nice scouting there. Sees the starport, comes in, does win in, in terms of the early build order here. And Morrow not able to defend in time for the Oracle. Stats is going to get a massive lead. And once again, I, I'm excited to see what Maru is going to try to do to come back from this situation. I mean, he's getting Cyclones, um, which, I mean, obviously, he could try to do a counter push with them. We could, we've seen a few Cyclone drops recently. Uh, TY was doing a little bit of that uh, in Challenge, but the, the elephant in the room is this Naxxus. I mean, he, he's got three bases now. He has the saturation at 50 probes to support these Nexi. And he has time with the, to, to buy for these three gateways to finish, to have enough units. And even if he, uh, if Morrow was even a little bit faster with this push, it just feels so puny because of the Marines that were killed already. He doesn't even get this Adept initially. We'll get it eventually. <laughs> but it slowed down the push slightly, you yeah. know. Uh, no Mothership Core, actually, though. That's somewhat of a problem. I didn't realize he didn't have that. Oh, the Stasis Ward. That's so good. It catches both of the Cyclones. Going to take away a lot of the damage that could have gone down onto the pylons. Ah. These two buildings are going to be canceled. That's That Stasis Ward just one stats the game, I feel, in, 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 in terms of the last nail in the coffin. Um, you know, he was famous for his Stasis Wards now in Korea, of course, from his final yesterday, uh, where he used them against uh, his opponent, Sue, in the finals. But, I mean, this is just... I mean, I don't even know what to say here. I just feel <laughs> bad. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the follow-up to what happened earlier on, and the Stasis Ward, as you said, just confirms it. He's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to force Maru to do a bit of a fantasy GG timing. You can see Maru actually wiping his nose right now. He's like, well, I, mean, I don't know what I'm going to do here. That Stasis couldn't have hit better targets, and it's specifically the two Cyclones, the two units he needed to secure that bunker, secure that turret, and start that slow push. And now, this is just uh, an epilogue of the finished game. If you guys are curious what happened after the game ended a few moments ago. <laughs> uh, his stats, you know, he has a fully mining third base. He has blink in just a second. He can blink into the main base. He has, uh, you know, a robo coming up. He's missing glaze, but, he, you know, 
He's he got just to has the way. He, he's, he's he has fine. he has the numbers he needs to just dominate the rest of this. Even if he can't kill Maru per se right now, he just continues to keep him on two bases. That's why Siege Tank's coming out right now. He doesn't want to make that, but he has to. I wonder if he's almost forgotten about those oracles, or he's just waiting until the push goes down because. Well, they're just sitting there with a ton of energy. Okay, it looks like finally he's going to bring one. Maybe harass that natural. This scan is going to see how many probes he has, and he's just going to be like, God, what do I do from here? Revelation comes down. He can just pick make... the Widow Mine. Yeah. Sees the tank, and he's like, all right, well, we'll just play your game if you want. I mean, I'll just keep you on two bases and take a fourth. He's probably going to take a fourth very soon. He can continue to pressure while doing so. Maru does have a large amount of production set up for when he does have that third base, and he does have the third CC, but he's not going to have, uh, you know, the economy to support all this right now. Double starport, all these extra, uh, you know, all these extra barracks. It's going to be very difficult to make this transition. He's going to try to do what Ty did already. The fusion core is coming up, but he can't support. He cannot make th triple starport BCs on two bases. He cannot. Yeah, it's not going to happen. He needs to take third base, and he knows it. And Stats is like, well, I dare you. <laughs> you know, go go for it, man. That's Let's where we're at. that works. And he actually may just try attempt to snipe this while the siege tanks are out of range, force it to lift again. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that he's not shelling that right now. Yeah, he's, he's, like, giving Maru almost a little bit too much room. He's, like, being too safe. Waiting, perhaps, for another warp in. Yeah, as you said, he does have a, a fourth Nexus on the way, too. Comes a drop too. Okay, he's gonna threaten a shade. I don't think he will commit to this. Although he very well might. You know what? He has blink too. Yeah. He actually is gonna commit to this, and he's just gonna stop this. Yeah. He gets underneath everything, takes out the one liberator in the sky. The tank's not doing enough damage. CG stats takes the 2-0. Don't even need to shell that CC man. A GSL champion comes in, bops Maru there. That was. You know, you and I said if we had to predict, we would choose Maru based on the fact that he has such a lead in preparation, he has so yeah. much to study and watch for. And we can even look as far back as how uh, Stats was playing in his finals against Innovation uh, for the IEM Gyunki finals. There's so much PVD to say for him, there's so much to prepare for. He's the only uh, player, you know, really left in the team house here, along with uh, SOS, the Jinner players. They're in a team house, and Stats just annihilated him there, shut down everything he threw at him. I feel like this game went wrong the moment he decided to make the proxy star port. I mean, if he just made that at home, the whole game could have looked different. But uh, <laughs> he, he canceled it. At, like, it's always tough to cancel a proxy star port, right? You oh, cancel yeah. it at 10%, 20%, it's so painful. You cancel it at 98%, <laughs> it's the most painful. Yeah, the Adept got over there in pretty much the perfect time. And stats, well, perhaps we underestimated just how good he could play even without preparation without too much rest and well he's able to take the 2-0 so redeems himself after the 1-2 loss to his teammate solar last week and will definitely be in a better position going into next week i have to say unfortunate uh by morrow didn't really get the performance we wanted from him but guys we're going to take a quick commercial break before we go to the third match innovation up against former teammate dark